Keep going, Alice. Wake up. Alice? <gasps> I'm in my car. Waking up in the crashed car felt like I had woken from one nightmare and entered another. I couldn't remember how I got there. All I knew was that something terrible had happened to Alice. The phone was dead. I'd have to find help on foot. Oh, we don't even have time to think about the argument we had. But it's, it's hard because I really thought we were coming here for vacation purely, but then suddenly my wife is like, Hey, actually, you know, we are vacationing, but you can also get help if you want it. I feel like I would be kind of pissed too. Like that's... Some things you just gotta let people work on at their own pace. Creator's Dilemma. What a very fitting book. Okay, I went from diving into the lake to being crashed on a cliff. Among Alice's things was a book, The Creator's Dilemma, oh. by a Dr. Emil Hartman. Seeing the book brought back my fight with Alice. I didn't like it, and I didn't like the guy's smug face on the cover either. I didn't bring it. It's Alice. I know she wants the help, but I'm clearly very not ready to accept it. That's dangerous. Don't touch that. The gas station was my best bet. They'd have a phone I could use. It looked like a long hike through the forest to get there. And there are cars going by too. Oh, those crows were attacking me earlier. Damn. Oh! Well, we won't be seeing Dr. Hartman's smug face anymore. Silver linings. Is there a limit to how long I can sprint? I just want to know, in case. Ugh. We're in nature right now. It's the forest. There's like no electricity. Hello? Or is there? Hello? Is someone there? The loose sheets of paper were pages from a manuscript entitled Departure. That was the name I planned to use for the next novel I had never gotten started. I was named the author. I hadn't written it. I couldn't remember writing it. In the scene on the page, the hero was attacked by an axe murderer in the woods at night. The title page of the manuscript. Departure by Alan Wake. The man turned to face me. His face was covered in shadows. It was hard to make him out in the darkness of the forest that surrounded us, but the ax he lifted was plain to see. It glistened with the blood of his victim. He grinned madly. The shadows were alive, distorting his features. It was a scene from a nightmare, but I was awake. Alan Wake. The good thing about nightmares is that you can wake up from it, but what if you can't? What if it's reality? Let's just get out of here quickly. Oh god. Anybody there? Please! I've been in an accident! When it's this dark and late at night, I feel like I'd be scared just seeing a shadow. But Alan's calling out to him. Oh. That's gotta be a good sign. The lights up ahead were a good sign. <laughs> Maybe I wouldn't have to hike all the way down to the gas station to find a phone. Hmm. The rocks are a little bit shaky. Huh. We can get through via the log, but I wonder. Hmm. 
No, nothing going on around here. Just the scary dark woods. Okay. Okay. Oh, this is pretty spiky. Caution! Employees must wear protective eyewear at all times. Sorry, I don't have that. Anybody there? Please! I've been in an accident! You hit your head pretty badly. You were bleeding and all. Are you okay? Hey! Hey, you! Fail! There's been an accident! I need help! Deposit. Listen, I need to... Premium cabins for rent in... Oh, hell. Carl Stucky. Please, to beat you. non refundable reservation. Deposit required. Fair and square. <laughs> Well, there's the axe murderer. Wake fights a Taken with light. The Taken stood before me. It was impossible to focus on it, as if it stood in a blind spot caused by a brain tumor and eye disease. It was bleeding shadows like ink underwater, like a cloud of blood from a shark bite. I was terrified. I squeezed the flashlight like my life depended on it, willing it to stop coming any closer. Suddenly something gave, and the light seemed to shine brighter. A description of what we saw before already. We were shining a light on the, the Taken. That's what they're called, because they were taken by... what the narrator was saying is the Dark Presence. Hmm. If this is still... oh god. If this is still a dream, it's kind of interesting because Alan never saw Carl Stucky, right? We left the diner before he came out, but yet he's here. So it's like, how is he a figment of my imagination if I never even saw him before? Which might be a clue to say that, hey, maybe this is not just a nightmare. But is it reality? I really hope not. You, to arrive. you can have the deposit! You lose! Shit. The deposit. That's okay, yes, I'm okay with that. <laughs> I had to figure a way out of this. Any second now and Stucky would be knocking on the door with his axe like Nicholson in The Shining. Energizer! Energizer sponsor! I forgot about this. How often do people even buy batteries anymore these days? During your stay I recommend trying walking. It's the latest thing. Incontestably proven health benefits let you kill two birds with one stone. You can see the sights and keep those cholesterol levels down at the same time. What's Nordic walking? Walking like you're a Nordic person? <laughs> Yes. Oh, Bright Falls Sheriff Station. Oh, may I? Hello? Hello? Uh. Oh, okay. Okay, he just. This is bad. I guess we should probably leave. Woo! No, no. Yes. We gotta go to the gas station, our next hope. There were more of them. Here 
Here's some more. Oh! Rather than that- Oh! My god! My head pounded with a concussion. I'd never fired a gun outside a shooting range. And now I just killed someone. Or something. There were no bodies. They just disappeared. What the? If I was dreaming, it felt real enough to make me sick. Oh, I think I stepped on the electricity. Mm, look at that. It doesn't show if you're not shining on it. Yeah, keep thinking. Let's think we're killing something, okay? I don't want to think that we're killing somebody. And I don't think it's a good idea to think that way anyway. We don't have time to think that way. The dark forest was the last place I wanted to go, but I had no choice. I had to get to the gas station. Hold on. The arrow's pointing that way, but it's telling me I just turned off the electricity so I can go the other way. Eerie hand-painted graffiti was revealed by my flashlight. Someone had hidden a chest of supplies near it. Someone's trying to help me. Flare gun. Well, that time was okay because we had the help of this light. But that's not going to be the case every time. Oh dear. Can we crouch? No. Whoa! Do headshots matter? Right now we're pretty loaded on supplies. Ho. Hmm. Whoa, that's suddenly so far away. Rose daydreams about Wake. Rose knew she had been gushing, but right now she didn't care. As far as she was concerned, her brief meeting with Alan Wake was literally the high point of her life. She watched as he got in the car with his wife. She was pretty, confident, at ease with Wake. Not like Rose. They were perfect for each other. She'd have given anything to be called their friend. Some of these pages are things that we've seen already, but some of them, like the axe murderer, it's more like a foretelling. Or a bad omen or something. I don't know how to feel about that. Does knowing that something is gonna happen make me less scared or more scared? I honestly don't know. Because if you know it's gonna happen, the next thing you're gonna wonder is, okay, well, when is it gonna happen? When's the axe murderer gonna come out? And then just when you forget about it, suddenly it happens. Whoa! What the hell was that? Don't talk in my head, please. Or at least speak English. When I saw the river below, something uncoiled itself inside my head. I realized that I'd have to find a way across. I didn't even want to look at the water. I say, standing on a log in the middle of the river. Do you want to go this way? It doesn't lead anywhere. Oh, hey! I don't even know where the gas station is anymore. It's the kind of thing that you can see easily if it's- if we're high up and far away. But the closer we get, the harder it gets the- um, Keep a good track on where it is. Maybe over there. But all we gotta focus on right now is probably just get to the light. Hello! Stucky was still out there, in the dark, stalking me. See, that's what I mean. When you forget about the axe murderer, he comes back.
We're okay for now. He seems kind of slow, and... He's just trying to sell me on how good Bright Falls is. Yeah. That's- Oh! Oh, Jesus! Oh! Oh, shit! There's another one! Should probably use a battery. Oh my god! Every time I focus on one, another comes out of nowhere. Caution! Proceed at your own risk. Logging area ahead. Perfect place for an axe murderer. Oh, but you know, when we first arrived at the cabin, remember towards the back by the generator? There was an axe on that stump. So maybe that's the sort of thing that got lodged in my subconsciousness that's making me think, hey, maybe next I'll write about an axe murderer. Just something lying in our subconscious, things that we didn't even know we knew. But of course, all that assumes that Alan's the one who wrote the pages, but we don't know because he doesn't remember it himself. But the title of the book was one that he was planning on using, so that's kind of... that's pretty freaky. By the way, if it's not clear enough, when I'm speculating, I actually don't remember what happened in the story. Taken. They're taken. The taken are filled with darkness. Has somebody else been here besides me? They're helping me. If whoever's breathing that loudly could stop, I would really appreciate it. Feels like somebody's breathing down my neck. Okay. We continue? Walk on the main road. The light's over there. We're so close. The staircase was broken. Oh. I had to make my way up some other way. Jump. You can jump this. Come on. Gotta get those energizer batteries. There was no power. There was bound to be a generator somewhere at the logging site. <sighs> mm, there it is. But we can look around. Hmm. <gasps> Nothing's gonna happen until I touch a generator. You know, that's how it is. Oh god, my god! I didn't even touch it yet! Maybe I should be using a flare- Oh god! No throwing stuff, please! Oh, excuse me, please! No! No, that's a hazard in the logging camp. No, oh, this is a freaking hazard, goddammit! Maybe I shouldn't have used it that quickly. With all this forestry equipment around, there had to be something I could use to reach the top. Go look inside the house. Ah. Oh. Build more logging company. Do I really want to see this? Wake attacked by birds. I heard them before I saw them, swooping down from the sky and screeching as they came. I spun around just as the cloud was upon me. For an instant, I stared into a hundred dead eyes black pearls glittering in the darkness. I raised the flashlight and the swarm exploded like fireworks. Feathers burned, turned into ash. I couldn't hear my scream above theirs. That happened already when we were trying to um, get to Alice in the cabin. Whole bunch of... Oh, good! Whole bunch of ravens or crows or whatever were trying to get at me. We good here? 
Okay. Well, we have a generator. What does this turn on? Oh, the light. Lights are always good. Yeah. It's a nice checkpoint. And as soon as we reach the light, it means that we don't have to kill anybody because as soon as we touch it, everybody seems to die. Hmm. There's a log lift. Hold on. Hold on. Where was that log? There was a thermos here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, hmm. Am I trying to bridge the gap here? I guess I could. And then I'll climb up the ladder. Yeah? Good, good, good. I just need to get to the gas station, please. Or even just here, you know? Just that one spot. We did it. Somebody was having fun here. Somebody was no longer here. Okay, good, good, good. Shock and ammo, thank you very much. I was just outside for a breath of fresh air, and what a night. I, I know most of you are probably in your beds by now, but if you're still up and around, take a moment. Step outside for a spell and breathe in deep. Mm, the weather is absolutely still. The sky is crystal clear. It's like the forest is quietly breathing along with you. As you listeners know, I'm a, I'm a night owl, and it's on nights like this I wish I wasn't cooped up in the studio. Makes an old man like me wish I could just roam wild. <laughs> but here I am, and who'd keep you company all night long if I weren't? Uh, it looks like uh, I'm not the only one staying up late. Caller, you're on the air. Hey, Pat, it's Maurice Horton. Hello, Maurice. What are you up to? Well, I was just taking Toby on his walkies. Oh, isn't it beautiful out there? <gasps> Pat, the reason I called is that Toby heard something rustling in the undergrowth and took off after it, and I couldn't find it. Probably a rabbit. Sure. Toby loves rabbits. Well, sure. Anyway, I figured that, you know, if anyone runs into Toby, they could grab him. My number's on his collar. And Toby's a friendly dog? Oh, <laughs> Toby loves people. Usually he comes back, but we, we were pretty far from home, and it sounds like he went pretty wild there. Great dog, but he's just too dumb for his own good. <laughs> well, Maurice, it's out there now. Hope Toby comes home soon. Yeah, thanks, Pat. You have a good night now. It's a small enough town that this kind of message might actually be able to help him find the dog. Oh, but it's so unsettling. It's really unsettling when you're in this strange nightmare, but the radio is still broadcasting normal things. I feel like that might be even scarier than the radio broadcasting scary things. Because there's like a dissonance here. And what do we do about that? I don't know. I don't know. <gasps> no, it's telling me to come back here. We got it already. Okay. Ain't that lovely? Wake finds pages. Meta. At first, I kept finding the pages as if by accident. The book I couldn't remember was either a terrible and true prophecy or an act of creation that had rewritten the world. I began to hunt the pages feverishly, for they held the answer to the mystery. With it, I could save myself. With it, I could save Alice. Yeah, that's true. If we know that these pages kind of predict what happened, then you want to know what happens next by finding them. This has nothing to do with being scared or not. You just want to know, especially because you got to save your wife. I spelled prophecy wrong. Maybe that's what the guy meant when he said I'd be nothing without my editor. 
Oh, hey. The gas station is closer than I thought. The gas station was closer now. It's light welcoming in the darkness. Paul makes the best dogs in the state. Willie Burster is the best with no contest. Monster Dog is second best. The famous dog is... It's starting to get a bit more senseless with the things he's saying. Ah! Ah! Hold on, hold on. Gotta save my battery. I think for these normal guys, we probably don't have to use a shotgun. I don't even know where I am. TV in the gas station. I stepped into the gas station's garage. It was dark and quiet. The place was a mess. It looked like someone trashed the place or that there'd been some kind of fight. Light spilled into the room through an open door at the back and I made my way toward it. Without any warning, I was blinded by a bright light. An old portable TV on the shelf had come alive by itself. Impossibly, I could see myself on the screen talking like a madman. So that's a premonition of what's to come. I don't think we're gonna be able to find all the pages because we're not on nightmare mode, but I don't really wanna... Whoa, where am I? Have I been here before? Because I thought I was taking the wrong path and uh... No, I guess that was the right path. Wait. Is it alright if I go back a little bit? Because I... Yeah, if we look at the little yellow dot, then we can see which side is the right place. But what was on this side then? Because I'm pretty sure there was... Ah! Uh... No, 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 no. Please, no. Can you not? Woo! Jesus! Please, please, stop! <laughs> because I try to go back. I'm pretty sure there was nothing back there, though. Let's keep going, then. Salad is healthy. Salad's good for you. Oh, jeez. If I see the guys, I gotta kill them first. I can't run away. At least, I can't run away from them forever. Caution trucks? Oh, logging. Logging trucks. Ugh, I don't feel like we should walk in the middle of that. Oh god, oh god. Yeah, let's turn around. I don't have to aim that well. All I gotta worry about is aiming and reloading. Wake lies to the sheriff. The cabin on Cauldron Lake? She asked. The sheriff looked at me suspiciously. The early morning light flooded through the office windows. I would probably never have gotten out of the woods alive without her help, but I couldn't tell her the truth of what I'd faced the previous night. She'd think I was lying or crazy. She'd lock me up, and she wouldn't help me find Alice. 
Mm, so when we find this kind of thing, it's reassuring because it's telling me that, hey, it sounds like we made it to day two and we're gonna be okay tonight. So one small comfort, if nothing else. No thermoses around here. Who is making that noise? Could you please stop? Thank you. Oh, I'm full on batteries already. I shouldn't be trying to save any. Oh! Remember what we read before about the TV? Science. It bestows immortality on those who advance it to elevate all of mankind. Newton, Einstein, Sagan, princes among men. But the price for such a legacy is steep indeed. In Night Springs. Tonight's episode, A Quantum Suicide. If our lives are already written, it would take a courageous man to change the script. Having called a press conference, Dr. Um. Barclay Colvin is about to demonstrate that very courage. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, I am Dr. Barclay Colvin, and I'm glad so many of you could join me here at the Moorcock Institute. Tonight, I'm going to give a practical demonstration of the many worlds interpretation. As you can see, this is a loaded 9 millimeter pistol. It shall be part of a thought experiment. And now, a real experiment, known as a quantum suicide. Did he say suicide? Is that a real gun? He's kidding, right? Uh, please, please, stay calm. There is no risk. Observe what occurs when I place the weapon against my own forehead. Uh. Now, you might think this round is merely a dud. Not so. Observe the flower pot. And yet, I myself cannot be harmed with this gun. With each pull of the trigger, two new realities branch off. One in which the weapon didn't fire, and one where it did. With my machine here, I have ensured that this reality is always the former. I have bestowed upon myself quantum immortality. Under no circumstances can this gun kill me. Uh, so wait, wait, wait. What you're saying is that every time you pull the trigger, in another reality, you die? Yes, yes, of course, but that's completely trivial. There's an infinite number of things that could happen at any moment, and they always do happen somewhere. The point is, this one thing did not happen here. You're insane, Colvin. Insane? Insane? Hey, was this thing supposed to be plugged <gasps> in? I stumbled on it. You fools! Gaze upon quantum immortality! Oh no. Poor, poor Dr. Colvin. Filled by his own hubris or the ignorance of the masses. Perhaps he should have left the crate unopened, the decaying atom unobserved. Curiosity often kills the cat in Night Springs. His machine wasn't even plugged in. Oh, this isn't the TV at the gas station, so that's why we didn't see the... the thing that was in the manuscript. If that machine was plugged in, would it have worked? We'll never get to find out. Does the gate open? Yup. Even if that machine worked though, it still means that he dies in another reality. It's not gonna be the one that this one is in, but that still... That still feels kind of... Like, I don't really want to murder myself, even if it's not really me, so to say. Oh god, what? It didn't work! Oh 
We're okay. We're okay. Wasn't this one swinging earlier? Now it's completely still. big one. We should probably get rid of the other guys. The engine takes hours to cool. I mean, tools in the engine and fatal mistake to make. Count your tools before and after. This place too. I'm sorry I didn't let you finish your speech. Stucky's body vanished, leaving behind only a lifetime of nightmares to come, assuming I'd reach the lights of the gas station alive. You will, and you know you will, because next morning you talk to the sheriff. The silver lining of the manuscript pages. Mm-hmm. There's got to be a thermos around here. <laughs> Not that I really care, but you know, if it's around, I'll I'll pick it up. I think in total there's over a hundred, so this is definitely something we can't worry about. Let me get out of here, please. Gas station! But the TV! Oh, <gasps> there's so much I light here! I recognized the parade float I had seen in Bright Falls when I first arrived with Alice. Maybe that's why it's here. It's part of your subconscious. After the insanity I had just experienced in the darkness, the lights of the gas station felt comforting. At least for a moment, the sane world reasserted itself. No kidding. Huh. Huh? What was that? Stucky taken. Stucky spat on the garage floor and tried to shake the cobwebs from his head. Ever since the couple never showed to pick up the keys, things had been fuzzy. Something, a feeling caught his attention. Stucky looked up and stared as his brain tried in vain to process the horror before him. He stumbled back, knocking over a can of oil. A black pool spread across the floor while he struggled for a brief moment, then let go as the unrelenting darkness engulfed him. Yeah, so he's directly saying that this is happening after I failed to come pick up the keys. This is him being possessed with something that happened to the real Stucky. This isn't my dream. Or rather, it's a dream that I can't wake up from. The deer fest had been two weeks away when we arrived. If the day count on the banner was right, I was missing a whole week between the night we got here and now. What? Wow. That's... that's a long time. Wouldn't people have realized, though? I'm not a regular in the town, but... I'm a known figure. Wouldn't someone come look for me? I had to get inside the gas station to find a phone to call for help. Not if there's thermoses around. Racing oils. Okay. There's no cars here. Oh. The garage was a mess. It looked like someone had trashed the place. Or that there'd been some kind of fight. We should try to take this car and get out of here. There is even a gas station. <gasps> okay. All right. I'll keep writing. Outside, there's only darkness. Outside the cabin, outside the story, there's only darkness. I can feel her presence in the dark. Just now, I could smell her perfume in the room. I'll reach her. I'll fix it up. 
I'll bring her back. The story will come true. If I stop, she's lost. I don't believe this. It'd been me on the TV, talking crazy. Was I losing my mind? It could be what we did in the seven days. We did fall into the lake and then somehow wake up in a car. So we don't know what happened in that week. Oh, the shadow of the fan scared me. Look at that. There's a phone. Oh, Nordic walking! Incontestably proven health benefits. But what is Nordic walking? The 68th annual Deer Fest. Games and activities, raffle tickets, fishing competition, pie contests and surprise competitions, live music for the children, Bucktooth Charlie afternoons, and Montgomery the Mystic's amazing Phantasmagoria evenings. Don't miss the legendary Deer Fest parade. This Deer Fest is like um, an anchor for me to figure out the chronology of things around here. Bright Falls Sheriff Station. Oh, thank God, Sheriff. Sheriff Sarah Breaker, you are... I'm Alan Wake, but listen. I was in a car crash. My wife, Alice, she's missing. Calm down, Mr. Wade. We were staying in a cabin on the island, on Cauldron Lake. There's no island on Cauldron Lake. Not since the big eruption in the 70s. Please, I can take you there, okay? You look like you've taken a pretty bad knock to the head. She thinks we're crazy. Are you okay? Listen. We'll figure this out. Please get in the car. We'll swing by the lake, and then we'll go to the station, okay? Mr. Wake, have you seen Stucky, the guy who owns this place? No! I realized I couldn't tell her what had happened in the forest. She wouldn't have believed me. And then she wouldn't have helped me with Alice. Exactly as the manuscript page says. That funeral lady, the widow lady, did something. She gave me keys to a fake cabin. That isn't even there anymore. Oh my god.